A year ago, Cuba faced the most widespread protests since the revolution. Now hundreds of people have been sent to prison for going out and demanding better living conditions on the island. Patrick Openman explains why many are concerned that a new revolt are on the horizon. When the largest anti-government protests here since the Cuban Revolution took place last July, thousands of people poured into the street. Demonstrators demanded food, medicine, and political changes in spontaneous marches across the island. Protests even took place in smaller cities like San Jose de las Lajas, where brothers Nadir and Jorge Perdomo, both teachers, address this crowd of people that residents say remain peaceful. Mis hijos salieron porque, como todo cubano. My sons went out because, like every Cuban, they were desperate over the situation. The two men's mother told us they are fathers. Every day here, we have less. The government crackdown was swift and harsh. As police arrested hundreds of protesters, Nadir and Jorge made a last video where they said they were merely expressing the discontent that many Cubans feel. Days later, the two brothers were arrested. According to court records that CNN reviewed, neither man had a prior criminal record and both were well regarded in their community. All the same, Jorge was sentenced to eight years in prison and adhered to six years after being convicted of charges including disorderly behavior and insulting public officials. Human rights groups say the Cuban government is trying to intimidate their own people from taking to the streets again. And we found that constantly prosecutors were charging uh, Cubans for exercising their basic rights, such as the right to protest peacefully, the right to insult the president or to insult police officers exercising their freedom of expression. It remains to be seen, though, whether the mass trials will succeed in silencing dissent. A year after the protest took place, and many of the economic problems that Cubans confront have only gotten worse. There are frequent blackouts that last for hours and seemingly endless lines for food and fuel. Although the Cuban government has succeeded in cracking down on the social unrest, many Cubans say it could explode again at any moment. So far, the government here says nearly 500 people have been convicted and sentenced for their roles in the protests, with some demonstrators receiving up to 25 years after being convicted of sedition. Officials say the protests were not the result of worsening living conditions on the island, but a campaign of sabotage carried out by Cuba's Cold War enemy, the United States government. But Marta Perdomo says no one had to encourage her sons to protest. My sons weren't paid. They didn't have to go out, but they felt the pain of Cuba, she says. My sons were free that day, she says. Marta says that local officials have ordered her to take down a sign she put up on the front of her house in a rare act of defiance, calling for the release of her two sons. But the sign will stay up, Marta says, until her sons finally are able to come home. Patrick Gottman, CNN, San Jose de las Lajas.